Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another edition of No DQ&A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQCW. And as always, no DQ.com. We're coming off the three hour Slammy Awards edition of Monday Night Raw. Got a lot of questions here, so let's get going. First one comes from Hayden Witt 40813. Hey Aaron, what are your thoughts on the returns of Ric Flair, Tommy Dreamer, and the Boogeyman? Do you think any of them will be back full time? It was great to see all of them come back. It was awesome from a nostalgic point of view. Um, I'm not sure if the Boogeyman's going to be back full time. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, same thing with Tommy Dreamer. I think that um, WWE just wanted to spice things up for the Slammy Awards and uh, brought out a lot of legends. You know, the New Age Outlaws came back as well. Um, as far as Ric Flair coming back goes, um, I think WWE did a tremendous job with his return and. Um, he really felt special again, and I mean, I think that WWE did more with Ric Flair in, in 15 minutes than TNA did in, in three years. I mean, WWE really uh, made Ric Flair seem like a big deal again, and um, I thought it was great. Um, I loved all the stuff he did with, with CM Punk and Paul Heyman in The Shield. Um, so it was great to see Ric Flair back. Um, I, I do think we'll see more Ric Flair. He'll, he'll be... Uh, making special appearances like Mick Foley. Uh, maybe he'll be the general manager. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so yeah, I, I think we'll see more of Ric Flair, but as far as Tommy Dream and Boogeyman goes, um, not not sure what the deal is with them, if they're going to be making more appearances, but stay tuned to NoDQ.com. Hopefully we'll have some updates uh, regarding Tommy Dream and Boogeyman. This one comes from DX Are You Ready? Hey Aaron, with Alberto Del Rio babyface now, is it the right time for Randy Orton to turn heel? Please answer in video. Well, I think it's been the right time to turn Randy Orton for, for quite some time now. I think that um, Randy Orton himself wants to turn heel. He's uh, made references to it on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I think mostly Twitter. I don't even know if Randy Orton has a Facebook. But um, on Twitter, he's, he's mentioned that he, he has uh, wanted to be turning heel for a long time. Um, and certainly now, you know, um, there's a lot more baby faces with uh, Del Rio turning face and Miz turning face. So that really does open the door uh, for Randy Orton to be heel again. And I think it's going to happen sooner than later. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm expecting Orton to be heel by the time WrestleMania comes along. And uh, maybe we'll see Randy Orton versus Sheamus or uh, some other match. But I, I do think... Uh, it's only a matter of time now before Randy Orton goes back heel, and it, it's long overdue because I think that um, the heel run has been, or the babyface run has been played out, and um, I, I, I just think it's the right time. Hey Aaron, do you think the New Age Outlaws should perform again? They look in great shape, and surely they would add to the tag team division. Please answer in video. Um, yeah, they, they looked great on Raw, and you know, it was in Philadelphia, so it was a hardcore WWE city, you had a lot of older fans there, and um, you know, they, they, they did the catchphrase along with New Age Outlaws, so, I mean, that was a really awesome moment, but um, I don't think that they're going to be regulars again, um, you know, WWE is, is focusing on younger talent, um, I could see them having a match every now and then, and I think it would be cool maybe to... Uh, have them uh, perform one more time at WrestleMania in some sort of multi-man match. I think that would be cool. That would be a good idea. But um, as far as them being regulars again, um, I, I just don't see that happening. I think that um, WWE is focusing on new tag teams, and um, you don't want to bring back too many old-timers. I mean, it's cool to have them once in a while, but um, it would get old fast if they were around on a regular basis. Do you think that mic work is currently the most important skill to have as a wrestler? Um, I, I do think when it comes down to mic work versus um, in-ring abilities, I think in the short term, it's better to, uh, be a be to, better to be a good talker. I think that um, having the good verbal skills will, will get you uh, further in WWE just because WWE is entertainment. And, you know, if you can talk well, you can sell yourself, you'll get over with the fans and... Uh, you know, you can do all the media appearances. You know, you got to have the charisma and be able to talk. Um, but I think in the long run, um, it, 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 it is better to uh, be good in the ring. You look at somebody like William Regal. He's been around for so many years now. WWE keeps him around even though his days as a, as a, a big superstar are over. Um, they still have him around. He's, he's uh, training new talent. 
And I mean, if you have the in-ring ability and skill, um, there's always going to be a place for you, and they're always going to need you, if not to be, um, you know, a top superstar, you know, have you around to help up, help out some of the younger talent. Um, and yeah, being a good talker, um, you know, that that will get you places. But yeah, having the in-ring skills, um, really, in, in the ideal situation, if you have both, then you're you're going to go really far. If Batista didn't get injured and didn't have to vacate the world title during his first reign, how long do you think he would have held the title? From what I can recall, the uh, plan in WWE was for Eddie Guerrero to eventually win the world title from Batista, and that feud was going to continue. So um, I, I think that there would have been a good possibility of seeing um, Eddie Guerrero versus Batista at WrestleMania, but then, of course, um, Eddie passed away, and then... Um, Batista got injured and WWE went a different direction. They they pushed Rey Mysterio to the top and uh, had him win the Rumble and then go on to WrestleMania. So um, I, I certainly think that um, Rey Mysterio wouldn't have gotten that big push um, if Batista didn't get hurt. I think that it was just a combination of, of Eddie's death and Batista getting hurt that WWE had to do something different and push Rey Mysterio. But yeah, I think that... Um, uh, it, it, there would have been a good chance we would have seen um, Batista versus Eddie Guerrero at WrestleMania for the, the world title. Uh, this one comes from uh, Nebo CSID. With all the weekly shows WWE puts on, do you think they're overextending themselves both creatively and physically? Absolutely, 100%. Um, there, there's definitely too much WWE television right now. You know, the writers have to come up with new material every single week. They have to script these shows, and they get burned out. And when they get burned out, they just uh, resort to old ideas, and they, they recycle old storylines and angles. Um, so, yeah, it, it, that's that's uh, one good reason to uh, cut back on the amount of shows so the writers have more time to come up with uh, different ideas and... Um, they just put on better shows, and you know it's just a lot of television, and, and not just the writers, but everybody gets burned out when you have too much television. Um, and WWE, uh, you know, they they're going along with what USA Network wants, but um, it is definitely hurting their product, no doubt about it. And you you look back, I mean, there, there should have been a lesson to learn with WCW. WCW, um, you know, they were doing just fine, and then they added the three hours uh, for Nitro, and then they had Thunder. And they just had too much television, and, and uh, then the the product really started to suffer. And unfortunately, uh, WWE is going in the same direction. I, I don't think uh, quite as bad as WCW, but um, you know, it, it it's definitely uh, it, it's a chore sometimes. I mentioned this before. It you know, it's sometimes it's difficult for me personally to uh, sit through a three hour run. I'm fast forwarding through a lot of it. I just can't. It's just too much for me. And you know. Um, I can just imagine the average person not wanting to to sit through three hours, and it, it definitely definitely reflects in the ratings. You look at the rating numbers. Um, the third hour, with you know, the last hour of Raw used to be uh, the highest rated hour, but now it's the lowest rated hour. So it, it really shows that fans are uh, getting burned out, and it's just too much to watch, too much, uh, too much of the product. Which King of the Ring winner wound up as the biggest flop? I'd have to say that it's it's um, a toss up between um, Mabel and uh, Billy Gunn, but um, at least with Mabel, he did get a, a WWE title match at SummerSlam. Now, granted, it was a terrible match, uh, but at least he did get a big push after that. Billy Gunn, um, WWE really had high hopes for Billy Gunn. They were hoping he was going to be their next big superstar, um, but it just didn't really work out. He didn't really uh, excel as a singles competitor. And um, he quickly jobbed out to The Rock at SummerSlam, and that was it for his big push. He was back to doing a tag teaming with uh, Road Dog. So um, I, I would have to say that uh, Billy Gunn was the biggest uh, King of the Ring flop, and even Edge himself uh, mentioned it on television, you know, saying he wasn't going to Billy Gunn the King of the Ring title, which was funny. Um, so yeah, Billy Gunn, uh, unfortunately, I would have to say was the biggest flop because. There was some. There was such high expectations for him. I don't, I'm not really sure people had high expectations for Mabel, and uh, at least he did end up getting a title shot, and he did get a brief push. So yeah, Billy Gunn's my pick. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Thanks as always for watching. Um, stay tuned to NoDQ.com. It's WWE Week. You know you got Tribute of the Troops coming up. Um, 
the Super Smackdown uh, tonight. And you can check out NoDQ.com for all the latest regarding that. And uh, stay tuned for all the latest rumors regarding the Royal Rumble. We'll, we'll start to find out more information about what the matches will be, who's going to be in the Rumble. Um, you know, people mentioned Tommy Dream. Maybe Tommy Dreamer will, will be part of the Rumble. Boogeyman, maybe. We'll just have to wait and see. So stay tuned to NoDQ.com, and I'll see you next time for more NoDQ&A video.